Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel with Kiria, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian. Today, we will continue our study to the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We will cover chapter 7. Before we continue, let's pray together. Father of light, Father of peace, Father of strength, and Father of grace. Father Job said that uh, I have desired the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. But I will joy in our heart we have gathered today to glean from your word. To receive what only you can give to us through your word. Father, we pray that you will teach us today by your Holy Spirit. You will give us revelation, knowledge, and truth from your word. Minister to everyone listening simultaneously. You know what we need today. I pray, Father, that you will flourish us with those things. Help us, the Spirit of God, not to be hearers only, but also doers of the word of God. Father, I pray that you will help us to understand that we need to depend on the power of the Holy Ghost to be able to be delivered from the body of death. Help us to understand that uh, the Holy Spirit of God is the only one who can help us to keep the old nature dead and buried. We cannot do this based on our own personal effort. So we deeply depend upon the power of the Holy Spirit to live a successful Christian life. You've done so many things for us and we are very grateful for every one of them. We say all glory, honor, majesty, power, dominion belong to you forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ and everybody said amen. My good friends, um, I welcome you today. Uh, we will continue our study and uh, uh, let's go ahead and start. So Romans chapter 7 verse 1. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives? For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband lives, she marries another man, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she has married another man. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the Lord through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should fear, bear fruit to God. So you remember last week and our previous studies, um, Paul said that our uh, the day that you got born again, not only that uh, God forgave you your sins and dropped the charge that was against you, he said, but you also died to sin and received the power by the Spirit of God. You received that victory over sin. Today, he adds something to it. He said, you also died to the law. 
Uh, when he's talking about law here, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, the law of Moses. Just like in the civil world we live, for example, if somebody owes like $20,000 in their credit card and uh, something happens to them, the moral obligation to that debt dies with them. So once they are dead, they don't have any more obligation to that debt. During the time of slave trade, the only thing that can set it a slave free is if that slave died. Except uh, maybe somebody bought them and uh, 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 gave them their freedom. But apart from that, uh, the only thing that will end their obligation to their master is uh, death. That's why uh, slaves then, we are not afraid to die because they know that is the only way they can be free. The day that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior was the day that you died to the law. Remember the law uh, magnified sin. He made it appear very sinful. And that day you got married to someone else. And that person is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So Paul uses marriage here to illustrate his point. He is not giving us a marriage counsel here. Neither is he talking about divorce or in any way diminishing uh, marriage. No, that's not the purpose. He's just giving us an illustration here using marriage so that we can understand what he's talking about. So just like in marriage, if uh, unless one of unless, unless the man dies, uh, if if the woman goes out and marries another one, uh, she is considered as an adulteress. The only thing that can set her free from that marriage and vice versa is the same way for men. The only thing that can set the man free is uh, the death of the wife. And this is the way that God has ordained it in the church. The only exception to this rule is uh, in the case of, um, of uh, 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 fornication, adultery. In the case of adultery. But if this is not in place, the only thing that can end that marriage and gives the other one the right to go marry another one is death of the other person. So that's what he's saying here. The day that we got married today, uh, uh, the day we, 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 we got born again was the day that we died. And that was the day we received that uh, permission, the power to marry another one Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Remember the Bible says that the church is the bride of Christ. And uh, Jesus Christ is our goel. Uh, he is the one who paid the debt that we owe. The debt of sin. And uh, gave us back our inheritance through uh, bringing us and connecting us back to Father God. So that's what Paul is talking about here. You are dead to the law. And because you are dead to the law, you have now that authority, the freedom to marry another one, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 5, he says, From when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which we arose by the law we are at work in our members to bear fruit of death. But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. When, before we got born again, 
we were married to sin. You know, sin magnified by the law. Just like in, a, 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 in marriages, people will produce offspring. So because we are married to the law, we produce children. And these children are children of immorality, which also led to death. If we didn't come to Christ, it was a one-way ticket to hell, eternal damnation. Because we were married to the law, which magnified sin. The same way he says, now that we are married to Christ, that we should produce fruit of righteousness. Now, the fruit of righteousness that he's talking about here is a proof that we are born again. Remember, you are not saved by what you do. The root of salvation can only come from Jesus Christ, faith in what he did. By grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. At least any man should boast. But after you are born again, after you, 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 after you came to Christ, there is supposed to be fruit of righteousness that can be seen by others in your life. Something that people can look and they, they, they will notice. The Bible tells us to work out your salvation with a, a, a fear. It wants to see a corresponding action to that faith which brought you to Christ. James said that faith without works is dead completely. So the way you talk, the way you conduct your affairs, your businesses, there has to be something there that outsiders, unbelievers, the hidden can see. And they will know there is something different about you. You see, we cannot syncretize uh, legalism with uh, the righteousness that comes by faith. The two do not go together. This is why people have problems inside the church. Because they are trying to come to Christ based on their human effort and by their good works and merit. But the Bible tells us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rats in the presence of God Almighty. So it's either you come to Christ, to God, through Jesus Christ, by faith. And when you do this, it produces life eternal. But if you go the other way, trying to reach God, trying to get hold of God through your own uh, uh, good works and uh, effort, the only thing it will do for you is to produce death, eternal damnation. And you do not want to go this route. So now we are talking about uh, fruit of righteousness. The way to, pro to produce fruit of righteousness is not you, depending on your own human effort and power. It is not possible. <laughs> you could not do this. But we have the Holy Spirit of God in us. And the Spirit of God in us, he will empower us to live a life that is pleasing to God. We enter into a process of sanctification whereby every day, every day, we are molded into the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a process that we continue to go through until Jesus comes. So we don't depend on our own personal efforts. We depend on the power of the Holy Spirit of God to be a fruit of righteousness after we got saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 7, what shall we say then? Is the Lord saying, certainly not. 
On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law said, had said, you shall not covet. Paul asked a question here. Remember he told us that uh, we are now dead to the law. <laughs> and because of this statement, he asked this question. If we are dead to the law, then is the law sin? And he answered that question. He said, certainly not. He said, perish that thought. The law is not sin. The law was given to serve his own purpose. The purpose of bringing you to the end of yourself. Remember we said uh, uh, that the law is like a mirror. It tells you what is wrong, and sometimes some, uh, sometimes it will magnify it and even make it bigger. But it doesn't have the ability in it to uh, make you righteous or to fix the problem. It was given to uh, let you know about sin uh, so that you will know how sinful you are. So... That was the purpose of the law. And remember, the law is still serving that purpose today for those who are not yet born again. The law is like the schoolmaster that will lead someone to Christ. After it has exposed to you how sinful you were, then you make that decision that I, I cannot help myself so I need a savior, uh, and once you, 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 you come to Christ, the law has served its own purpose. So remember Paul, in uh, Philippians uh, uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 5, when he said, uh, if anyone can boast, <laughs> Paul is talking about before he got converted. Now, if anyone can boast, he, he said, I can also boast. And then he gave us his credentials, his resume, his pedigree. He says, circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Concerning the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning the righteousness that is in the law, blameless. <laughs> that was Paul. When he was bragging on his own human effort. But someday something happened to him. While reading through the, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, he came across the commandment number 10, <laughs> which said... You shall not covet. When Paul read this, he understood very clearly that uh, so you should not covet. He's talking about uh, an inward attitude, not an outward behavior. You see, all this while, Paul has... Uh, paraded himself uh, on the outward uh, uh, manifestation of the law. He never thought about the inward part of it. When he read the Tenth Commandment, you shall not covet. And uh, it tells you the things not to covet. Your uh, neighbor's wife, uh, his property, his ox, his donkey, his male or female servant. So Paul knew right then that he <laughs> that he is guilty. Just like you and I, you know, uh, the moment you see uh, that uh, uh, beautiful car of your friend, uh, and in your mind <laughs> you say, "Oh, that's a very beautiful car. Ah, I wish I had one like that." That's covetousness. You are desiring something that doesn't belong to you. And according to the law, it says, it's sin. It says it's wrong. You cannot do that. So you and I, we are guilty of this. 
So Paul found out <laughs> that all this while that uh, he has been claiming to be that uh, blameless one. He's been breaking the law of God uh, through, through his heart or his mind. That was what brought him to the end of himself. Remember Jesus Christ said, uh, you have heard that he, he was said to the men of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I said unto you, if anyone looks at the woman lustfully in his heart, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Because sin originates from within. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Jesus Christ also said that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and the teacher of the law, you shall by no means enter or see the kingdom of heaven. What is he talking about here? You know the Pharisees, they are the strictest set in Judaism. So for someone <laughs> to keep, uh, uh, to have more righteousness than them, means that uh, he has to do something different. But here, Jesus Christ uh, was talking about um, being born again. That's what he's talking about. Because the righteousness of the Pharisees, uh, the, the righteousness was based on their human effort and performance. But Jesus Christ says that uh, that kind of righteousness cannot take you anywhere. It's not, it's not enough to, to bring you into the kingdom of heaven. And that is the reason why he told Nicodemus, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Paul came to this knowledge. And the moment he found out, <laughs> then he knew that uh, uh, he... He, he, he's not as he thought he was because now he can see all the, 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 the places that he has missed the mark. We continue in verse 8. But sin, taking opportunity by the commandment, produced in me all manner of evil desire. For apart from the law, sin was dead. So Paul says, not only that the law showed me what was sin, not only that the law magnified sin, but also the law created in me the desire to, um, uh, to break the law even more. The desire to rebel. You know, friends, um, there is this uh, rebellious attitude in humans. There is something in there that uh, when you say or when you see the sign that says uh, uh, no trespassing, <laughs> that is when you get the attention of so many people to trespass. Because now they want to find out what does he say? What does the sign say? Don't trespass. They want to find out. <laughs> so by finding out, <laughs> they trespass. <laughs> the best way to tell a child to do something is to tell that child not to do it. <laughs> you know, children, <laughs> you tell them, you tell them, don't do this. Don't. That is the best way to tell them to do that <laughs> because they will, they want to do it. They want to find out why does daddy say don't do that. <laughs> Let's find out. So they, they want to do it. I, I, I give you a personal example. Uh, uh, during the winter months, uh, one day I noticed that the house was very cold. And, uh, and uh, I went downstairs just to look at the thermostat to see uh, if anything was wrong with the thermostat. And when I got there, I found out that the thermostat was in the cool position instead of the heat position. So I knew that one of my little ones 
has turned it to that position. <laughs> so what? So so I I quietly turned it back to heat, <laughs> and I told my wife. I said, somebody turned in from heat to cold position, uh, uh, and uh, I'm not gonna ask who did it, and I'm not gonna tell them not to do it. Because the moment I tell them not to do it means that they're going to do it even more and more. <laughs> so this is the concept. This is what the Lord did. Not only that he magnified sin and made sin appear very sinful, it also increased the desire in people to rebel, to break the law even more. We are now in verse 9. I was alive once without the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So Paul said that I, I thought that I have arrived. I thought that I was a prophet. Remember what he said? He says consigning the righteousness that is in the law, I was blameless. In Philippians chapter 3, we just uh, 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 talked about it. So he thought that uh, he kept all the commandments. For the simple reason, he was focusing on the outward behavior and uh, forgot about the inward attitude. But the law, the purpose of the law was to cover both of them. It wasn't only given for the outward, it was, only, it was also given for the inward behavior. So until Paul read that you should not covet was when he came to the knowledge of this truth. And the knowledge of this truth brought him to the end of himself. In verse 10, he says, And the commandment which was, a, which was to bring life I found to bring death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. You remember in uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 18, you know, it, it, talks, it talks about um, do these things and you shall live. So Paul said that the commandment that was given to give me life, do these things and you shall live, turned around and became something that brought death to me. For the simple reason that the commandment doesn't have the ability to give life. That was not the purpose. The purpose was to make sin appear sinful, to magnify sin, to bring it to the end of yourself. It wasn't designed to bring life to you, to make you righteous. So Paul said that the commandment was given to give life to me because of my um, sinful nature, my inability to keep the commandment, it did the opposite. And it's still doing the opposite today for anyone who's not born again. Anyone who is trying to keep the laws. Uh, based on their own human effort, is still doing the same to them today. Instead of bringing life, it's it just uh, bringing death. The opposite. We are now in verse um, 12. Therefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. The law, the commandment of God is holy. It came from a holy God. God gave it for a purpose. To serve that purpose, so the law of God is holy. And like I said earlier, the commandment or the law of God is still serving the purpose today. To those who are not yet born again, it's still serving the purpose 
to bring them to the awareness that they are sinners and need a savior. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 13, he says, Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So here Paul says, has what is good that came from a good God cost me to die? And he answers that question. He says, perish the thought. That is not true. He says, the problem is me, not the law. The law is spiritual, but I am carnal. The ability is not in me to keep a spiritual thing. I don't have that capability in me. The law was given for a purpose. And the law is serving that purpose even up till today. So Paul is not blaming the law here for his failure. That's not what he's doing. Rather, he's blaming himself, his sinful nature, the inability in him to keep the law. That's what he's saying here. And in verse uh, uh, 15, For what am I doing? I do not understand. For what I will do, for what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will, I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Paul here begins to tell us about his uh, personal struggle as a Christian. The problem that he encountered while he was still living as a Christian. The same thing that you and I, we encounter today. Every Christian encounters this. And it is very good that the Bible wrote this, that the Spirit of God inspired Paul to put this in the, in the, in the Word of God for us to encourage us. Because uh, you and I, we go through this struggle every day as Christians. And now we, 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 we know by reading this that Paul went through the same problem. This struggle is not only manufactured for us today, it's been there. It's been there. And I'm glad that we, the Bible makes it uh, clear to us that uh, it is there and it, it will continue to be there. Paul tells us about his life. You know, his yo-yo, uh, if I put it that way, the yo-yo lives, uh, the yo-yo uh, the life of Paul. You know, that uh, roller coaster life, you know, up today, tomorrow down. Paul says that uh, the things that I want to do are the things that I, I end up not doing. And those things that I didn't want to do 
are the things that I end up doing. This is, this is the ordeal Paul went through. He struggled, struggled to do the right thing. But he still finds himself doing what is wrong. We can relate with this experience. This is your, your experience <laughs> of up to there, tomorrow down. You can remember in your life so many times when you've promised God, God, I'm not going to do this anymore. You know, I regret doing this thing and I, I know it is sin. You condemn me, so I condemn it and I'm not going to do it anymore. So we make promises like this to God only to end up uh, doing the same thing again. You say that I will never visit that website again uh, and look at those nasty things. And you promise God I'm not going to go to that website again. And you've even put things in place uh, 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 just to restrict you from having access to those uh, websites. But uh, before you know it, you are visiting those sites again. You promised God I'm not going to speak the way that I spoke to that uh, person the other day. I'm not going to do it anymore. But by the time you know it, you are talking the same way again to somebody else. So this is the struggle that we go through. There is no ability in us, in our natural uh, 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 um, uh, 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 we don't have the natural ability in us to be able to say these things, to make these promises to God and keep them. It's not in us. That's what Paul is saying here. The struggles that we go through every day as Christians. In a uh, verse... Um, 21, Paul continues, I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wishes to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Paul continues to lament his ordeal, his struggle. Uh, now he tells us the reason why there is this struggle going on. He talks about two natures, the old nature and the, uh, the new nature. They are still together in one place. So, uh, when you got born again, your old nature, your old sinful nature, uh, uh, was supposed to be dead and buried. That's, that's what's supposed to happen the day you got born again. But we understand by experience that uh, this old nature that was supposed to be dead and buried every now and then wants to come back to life every now and then wants to be fed and sometimes we end up feeding the old sinful nature and that's when we fall short that's when we break the uh, 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 that's what that's when we miss the mark when we feed the old nature Remember Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, I say to you, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. For the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to another so that you do not do the thing that you want to do. So there is a war going on between these two natures. The old nature wants to be fed with your old mannerisms. And the new nature wants to be fed with the word of God. 
So now this battle is going on every day. That is why we see the yo yo nature of humans. We go up today and we come down tomorrow because there is a big fight going on between these two natures. And Paul is bringing this to our own acknowledgement so that we know what's going on. He continues here to, uh, in verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Here Paul comes to the end of himself. He cries out for help. He said, I've had enough. I don't want to struggle anymore. This war that is going on between the old and the new nature, I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of it anymore. It's weighing me down. It's wearing me down. I don't want to control, I don't want to control in this route anymore. I need help now. I need a way out. I cannot continue to struggle on my own human effort. For I found out that I can never win depending on my own human effort. I need someone now to help me. I need help now. Paul cried out. So you and I should also cry out. And then find out where the help is. Because you and I, we need help. To be able to overcome this kind of uh, uh, two natures warring against each other. And that help is not found in you or in, in I. Because uh, we don't have uh, the ability in us. So now help is coming. Wait a minute. Just relax. <laughs> He's not going to leave us like that. He's going to tell us where to get help. <laughs> And once we, once we look in that direction, <laughs> help is assured. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are in verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the Lord of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so Paul says, that is solution. <laughs> solution is here now. <laughs> Not in sweet by and by. He said, solution is here now. And he tells us where the solution is. He said, the solution is found in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. <laughs> the empowerment to Keep the old nature dead and buried <laughs> is found in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Remember the Bible tells us that uh, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27, I believe. But how is Christ in you? Remember, Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. What is making intercession for us? So how is Christ in you? Christ is in you by the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Bible says in 1 uh, uh, John chapter 4, verse 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's talking about the Spirit of God that is in you now. Jesus Christ promised, he says, the Spirit of God is with you, but he will be in you. So, there is power now in us. The day you got saved and you came to faith in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of God moved in you and he came in with his own power to enable you. He is our Allah's paracletos, the one that is helping us, our comforter, our advocate, our standby, one that has come to take hold together with us, to be able to live a victorious life, to put the old sinful nature where he belongs and keep him right there. The problem is this. We oftentimes forget about the presence of the Holy Spirit of God in us. 
We don't even recognize that he's now in us and he will never leave us or forsake us. But he's with us even to the end of time. We don't even have that consciousness anymore. And this is the reason why so many Christians are battling, struggling every day, going up and down, up and down, up and down in their Christian work. Because they try not to depend upon their own self. They try not to do it on their own natural ability. And it is impossible to do it that way. The baby Christians, those who, who, who came to faith in Christ Jesus, uh, uh, the baby ones who just came to faith, they go through this struggle as well. They don't understand it because they thought when, once they get born again, uh, they, everything will change. Now they will have power over sin. They no longer do those things that they used to do. And after they got born again, they still see those things warring against their members. So now they are confused. They don't know what to do. And it is our own duty to able to educate them in this area, to tell them, hey, brother, sister, you got to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit of God to be able to overcome. For we understand that uh, uh, it is not by might and it's not going to be by your own power, but it is only going to be by the uh, uh, power of the Holy Ghost then you will be able to live a victorious Christian life. For the rest we know is not to the swift, neither is the battle to the strong, but we know that uh, it is God who is at work in us through the power of the Holy Spirit to will and to do of his own good pleasure. The then this is the reason why we can boldly say that I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me because we don't depend on ourselves. We depend on the power of the Holy Ghost to live a successful Christian life. So what are you going to do today? You've come to the knowledge of this truth. Are you going to continue to depend on yourself or are you going to turn it over to the Spirit of God by faith? It has to be by faith. We do this by faith. Remember in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes, not I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me. You see, it's going to be by the faith of the Son of God. So we're going to have faith that uh, the Spirit of God that is in us is going to enable us and empower us to be able to overcome this war that is going on. Now, let me make it very clear. This war is not going to go away. It's going to be a continuous process. The Holy Spirit is not going to make the war go away. No, that's not what he came to do. But he has come to empower you. Even when this war comes, Every time the old nature, that man that is buried but wants to stay alive, any time he crawls out of the grave, the Holy Spirit of God is going to give you the empowerment to put him back where he belongs. That's what the Spirit of God is going to do for you. So now, you know, you are expected to put it to work. Instead of complaining that I don't know what's going on in my Christ, in Christ, uh, Christian life, it, it is time for you to uh, uh, take a pause. Relax and uh, understand that greater one is in you. That he has come, he, he took his abode in you just to empower you to be able to put the old nature to the place where he belongs. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friends, I believe we have covered everything today. Next week, we will be studying um, Romans chapter 8. A very, very important chapter in the book of the Romans. So I will encourage you to read ahead. Uh, 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 be, fam be familiar with it. Uh, so that uh, once we read together, it will even make it easier for you to understand. I've come to the end of today's teaching. If you're not yet born again, or you have left your Christian work. You have departed from Christ. Today is another opportunity for you to come back to him. It is a day of salvation. 
Today is accepted time. The day that you hear his voice, the Bible says, do not harden your heart. Do not procrastinate any longer. We live in a very precarious and unreliable world where things happen. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone. We do not know what it's going to bring. Just today, about 150,000 people died worldwide. And uh, the question is this, where did they go? A man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. The spirit of a man is an eternal being. It does not die. So it has to spend eternity somewhere either in heaven or in hell. So for those that are not yet born again, and when I say born again, I mean someone who has trusted in Jesus Christ and has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and uh, has departed from his old ways, from depending on his personal efforts. This is the one that is born again. Being a member of a church doesn't make you a, a born again Christian. But their relationship, the personal relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, believing that God raised him from the dead, he died for your own sin, and you personally invite him into your own life. That's what it means to be born again. So for those who are born again, they will spend eternity in heaven. But those who have refused to do this, Unfortunately, we'll spend eternity in hell. Now, friends, hell is a real place. It is a place of eternal torture, eternal separation from God. It is not a pleasant place to be. You don't want to go that, to, you don't want to go that route. The reason is this. As long as you have life in you and you can hear the sound of my voice, means that uh, you can still make a change today. You can change the course of your life. You can turn around and depart from that road that leads to uh, uh, eternal damnation, hell. And then you can go to that road now that leads to heaven by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today. Do not put it up. Do not procrastinate any longer. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, Peter says, There is no other name under heaven that is given among men whereby we must be saved, except the name of Jesus Christ. So there is no way around it. Don't tell me that I belong to other religions. And uh, according to our faith, all roads lead to heaven. That's not correct. No, Jesus says he is the only way. You cannot go around it. You cannot have the Father God except to go through Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. Pray this prayer with all your heart. And today, you will become a child of God. Pray this prayer with me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe he is your son. He died for my sins. And you raised him up from the dead on the third day. Dear Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my life today. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I'm now born again. And you have dropped the charge against me. And you've forgiven my sin. I believe that my name is now written in the Lamb's book of life. I am now a child of God. Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory for this. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you say that prayer, congratulations, you were a child of God. Please, it's very imperative to find a Bible-based church where they teach the Word of God so that you can be taught the Word of God, become a member of this church. Buy a Bible, study the Word of God, and trust the Holy Spirit of God to give you revelation, knowledge, and understanding of the Word of God because that is the only way you can grow spiritually. 
I want to thank our partners all over the world. Those that are helping this ministry reach out to so many people. Spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ through their prayers for us, through their financial support, and through their services. If you want to join this ministry, if you want to become a partner with this ministry, please go to our website, kuim.org. Remember, it is only those who hear the word, the gospel, and they put the word of God in practice. We call them the doers of the word of God. They are the only ones who get the benefits of the word of God. So I encourage you today to be a doer and not just a hearer only. Good friends, I want to pray for you. May the Lord bless you and be with you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, rest of mind. The peace that passes every understanding. May he give you wisdom for today and wisdom for the future. Wisdom that will keep you from making unnecessary mistakes in your life. May he open doors of opportunities for you. May he set your feet upon that uh, rock that is higher than you. If you are sick in your body, I pray that the Lord will grant you healing right now and uh, give you that place of divine health. I pray that he will bless the rest of your week in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Oh, my good friends, you see, we live in a fallen world. We have an enemy, an adversary, and every day we go through trials and tribulations and challenges. But I want to encourage you today, regardless of what you're going through, always be rest assured. God is God. And he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask. I want you to have this confidence that surely there is an end. There is an expiration date for every trouble, every problem. And your end will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Baruch Hashem Adonai. In Agoske Labra Askati Aragunt. Vele Ekredeske Ina Askadapato. Alabanglandam Chikolo Pokolo to Sokolo Pokolo to Jekelete Sikelete Sakalata Chukoloti. Thank you for listening to this message from Simple Truth Gospel of Kiva, a teaching ministry that teaches the Word of God verse by verse to help you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.